Welcome to SKR Yoga and Wellness. Thank you so much for joining me here on my channel. My name is Sam. We're going to be doing a yin practice today, focusing on the hips and low back. So I already have a vinyasa flow focusing on this area of the body, but we're approaching it in this class from a yin perspective, so in a different way. Because this is yin, we're gonna be very passive and we're really gonna let gravity do most of the work for us. So this is also going to be a very relaxing flow and we'll definitely relieve some stress if that's also something you've been feeling recently. It's a very good idea to have two blocks handy. If you don't have blocks, uh, thick books or cushions, we'll definitely get the job done. So once you've got everything with you, we're actually gonna take one block over to this end of the mat and the other block at the top of the mat and we're gonna start lying down on our backs. So coming to a nice reclined place, getting comfortable. And the first thing we're gonna do nice and easy is just take the knees and hug them into your chest. And try to get them as close as possible so you're really making yourself into a very tight, compact little ball. And your feet can relax, your hips can relax. And we're gonna be here for a couple of minutes. And while we are here, I'll invite you to imagine on every exhale with your breath that your lower back is just melting into the mat and into the floor beneath you. So with each exhale, you're just letting go even more. It's important to remember in this class that we're not going to go to our maximum stretch right away because we are holding these poses for a long period of time. So you wanna to come to about a five or a six in resistance and then just resolve to be still in that pose and not fidget or try to push or pull yourself farther. We're just allowing gravity to do that work for us. It's really easy to feel in a pose like this one where we're just pulling our knees into our chest. But as we progress farther into the class, don't forget that we're finding our edge, and then resolving to be still. Take another 10 breaths or so here. And now we're gonna take another couple of minutes. You're welcome to stay in this pose as you are, or you can open up into happy baby. Now what's most important about transitioning to happy baby is you wanna feel that your lower back and your tailbone are still pressing into the floor and into the mat. So if you feel that your, your back is curving up off the mat, I would suggest just taking your knees to the outside of your armpits and just pulling them in a little bit closer. Otherwise, if your lower back can stay pressed into the mat, we're coming into happy baby. So elbows on the insides of your legs, grabbing a hold of the outsides of your feet, and just very gently, remember we're not going to our maximum stretch just yet, just gently guiding those knees down closer to the floor And same thing, same imagery as we had before. On every exhale, imagine that your lower back is melting and releasing further and further into the mat. And we'll take another minute and a half or so here in this happy baby.
And from here, if you were in your happy baby grabbing onto your feet, just gently let the feet go. Bring your knees back into the center of your chest. And we'll just release the legs down onto the mat. So of the feet on the floor. Now is when we will need our block or cushion. You're just going to place it underneath the hips, right under the tailbone. And then from here, you're going to extend your left leg out. And this might be like a feel like enough here. So you were aiming to feel a nice stretch through the front of the hip flexor. But if you'd like to progress further, you're going to take your right knee and pull it into your chest. And you can fully relax that left leg. And just pull that right knee in. Remembering that once you get to about a five or a six in resistance level, that that's where we're going to be still and hold on to this pose. We're going to take three minutes in total here. So really breathe. Again, feel that you're breathing into your lower back. So this time we're melting into the block rather than into the mat. And just allowing the front of your hip on the left side to open up and find more space and length. Very gently, with control, let your right knee fall back down onto the mat. Bending your left leg in, switching sides right away. So stretching out the right leg. Maybe bringing that left knee in closer to your chest. Just intensifying the stretch in the front of your hip. Same thing, breathing into your lower back. Feel yourself melting into the block, lengthening through the front of your right hip. Just focusing on the breath and being still.
And again, with control, really gently, place your left foot back down onto the mat. Bend your right leg in as well, so we can just press into the feet to remove the block. Place it off to the side. And we're gonna roll our way up, finding a seated position to start. And then we're gonna make our way onto the, into the only standing pose in yin, which is dangling. So first, let's just come into a little crouch here. So my weight is in the balls of my feet, your heels can be lifted, and it's almost like we're making that same tight, compact ball position that we started class with, but now we've just flipped it onto our feet. And then from this position, you're gonna push into your feet, send your hips up towards the sky, and just let your spine totally hang forwards here. You might find it useful to have a block underneath your hands if you're not reaching down quite as far as I am. But if the space is there, just let your hands fall to the mat nice and easy. Resist the urge to pull yourself farther into the stretch here. We're keeping the knees relaxed and we're really just letting the spine hang, creating space in between your vertebrae. Again, really feel with every exhale that we're releasing the lower back more and more. Take another 10 breaths. And from this position, you're gonna take your right leg, step it back to find a low lunge. I need to readjust my front foot here. So we're coming to a nice low lunge. You can release your back foot and we're gonna be here for a little while. So what I'm gonna do is just fold my mat over to kind of double up, just to add a little bit of extra padding under the knee. Maybe you would like to do the same at home. But from this position, you're gonna take both hands to the inside of that front left foot. And then you're gonna curl the toes up and turn them out. So we're coming to a little bit of a sickle, sickled foot here. And your weight is really on the outside of that foot. And we're gonna hold this position either up on your arms as I am here, or if you'd like to intensify it, you can come down onto your elbows. You can also come down onto your elbows um, with the help of a block, if that helps as well. So find whatever works for you, choose your variation and your level of intensity. And then again, breathing into that left hip, breathing into your lower back. This is a little bit more of an intense pose so really resist the urge to fidget out of it or wiggle around. Just really live and experience that sensation that you're feeling through the lower half of your body. And when you find yourself getting distracted or tempted to move, just keep focusing on that breath.
from here if you were down on your elbows. Go ahead and come back up onto your hands. First, recenter that left foot. So turn the toes back to face forward. Maybe frame that front foot with your hands. You can tuck your back toes just to lift and release the mat if you had folded it over. And from here, we're gonna step up back into that standing dangling pose. So stepping onto the left leg, slowly bring the right to meet the left. Feet are still hip width distance apart. And we're gonna repeat our forward fold here. And notice while we're here, if the legs feel different from one another after that rather intense lunge. Maybe your right hip, hip flexor feels a little bit more open. Maybe your left glutes feel a little bit more open. Just make those notes for yourself here. And feel that maybe the second forward fold that we're repeating, you can maybe go a little bit farther, maybe straightening the legs ever so slightly, but still keeping them relaxed so we're not locking into the knees or sitting in the joints, keeping them soft. And once again, let's take another 10 breaths here in this pose. So transitioning into our winged dragon, this time stepping the left leg back to find your low lunge. You might need to readjust your front foot ever so slightly, bringing both hands to the center of your right leg. And again, I'm gonna double up my mat on this side as well. And once you've got your knee supported, you're gonna lift your right toes open them up, so spilling your weight into the outside of your right foot. And then again, either staying up on your hands, coming down onto a block, or coming all the way down onto your elbows. And keep in mind that one leg might feel totally different than the other. It might be a fully new experience. And that's totally okay. We don't have perfectly symmetrical bodies. So your sensations on one side to the other might feel a little bit different. For me, my right side is always a little bit tighter than my left. Try to notice any differences or similarities that you can feel between your own two sides. And again, remember to focus on your breath in this pose. We'll be here for about another two minutes or so.
you were down on your elbows, make your way back up onto your hands. First thing is to re-square off that front foot, toes pointing forwards, and then maybe release your doubled up mat. And now from this position, let's square off that front leg. So your leg is in the middle of your two hands and you're actually gonna use your hands to help lift and place that knee down onto the floor and then rotate so that you're now facing the long edge of your mat. So you have your right leg bent in and your left leg extended. I'm not mirroring you here, so it'll appear opposite on the video. But you also wanna make sure, most importantly, that in this position, you're able to sit up nice and tall and right on top of your sit bones. If you feel that your weight is rolling backwards and you can't find your full extension, that's when you'll wanna take a block and just place it underneath the hips just so that you can lift up and keep a nice long spine. Otherwise, you can come all the way down onto the mat. And we're gonna come into a little side body stretch here. So in this position, on an inhale, feel that you're growing taller through the spine. And then on an exhale, you're just gonna let your head pull you over towards the left, so over your extended leg. And you can literally use your hand to help support your head here. And I like to take my opposite hand and place it on the opposite knee just to kind of help stabilize and find a little bit more balance. So you might feel this more directly in the side of your body on the right side, or you might feel it a little bit more towards your lower back on the right side. This is your QL muscle. That's really what we want to breathe into and release on each and every exhale. So continue that deep breathing, resolving to be still. Now you're welcome to stay on this side bend, or we're just gonna change up the direction of the stretch a little bit by turning to face your nose towards your knee. So this might intensify the stretch in your lower back on the right side a little bit. So feel it out, and if it feels like it's too much to hold here, you can always come back to that side variation supporting your head. Otherwise, returning to face that left leg and really in this pose, make sure that we're relaxing the neck, relaxing the upper body and the arms too, so resisting any urge to pull with your arms to get you further into the stretch. Again, just let gravity pull you forward. There's no need to apply any extra effort here. We'll be here for about two minutes.
And no matter what variation you are in to come out, use your hands to help you. So push into the floor to recover out of that side bend or forward bend. And really feel that length through the right side. We're gonna go right ahead and repeat on the left. So now extending your right leg out, left leg is bent in. Again, make sure that your hip bones and your sit bones are right on the floor here. So we're growing up tall. If you need a block underneath, reposition that for yourself as well. And just like we did on the first side, you're gonna take an inhale first to grow tall. And then on an exhale, let your head lead the way and let it pull you into your side stretch. Again, supporting your head, take your opposite hand to place it on the knee. And again, notice if one side feels different than the other. I know for me, I'm feeling this a little bit more in my neck than I did on the first side. And I'm also feeling it on the left side of my low back. So we'll take two minutes here before transitioning. Really breathe into that low back, creating space. And just like we did on the first side, you're welcome to stay in the side variation or rotate yourself so that you're facing towards your knee. The hips and the lower body don't change, but we just relax ourselves forward, relaxing the neck, relaxing the arms. And you might also feel a little bit of a stretch through the hamstring here. Of course, wherever you feel it, just breathe deep. Imagine elongating and creating space in that area.
and again, just like on the first side, no matter the variation you were in, use your hands to help push the floor away as you roll back up to a seated position. Coming out of your twist, we're gonna lower down onto our backs once again. And right away, as you lower onto your back, notice if your spine feels different from the beginning of class until now. And you're just planting the soles of the feet on the floor, taking a moment to feel any sensations through the back. From here, we will progress taking your right leg, keeping that foot flexed and crossing it over top of the left thigh. Maybe this is enough of a stretch for you, or maybe you want to uh, thread your arms through to grab a hold of your shin here and just gently guide your legs in closer to your chest. So again, we're not going to our maximum stretch right away. Find your edge about half of your resistance and just resolve to be still. This pose will require a little bit of activation through the arms just so that you can continue to guide that left leg towards you. But it's not much. We don't want to feel tense through the shoulders or through the neck here or tense through the biceps or the wrists. So it's the lowest possible amount of energy we're using to guide that leg in closer to you. Take another 10 breaths or so here. Now from here, keep the figure four shape of your legs, but just let the left sole of your foot plant down onto the mat. You're just gonna lift your hips and shift them over to the right slightly, and then maintaining the same shape with your legs, you're just gonna let your feet fall towards the left. So now the sole of your right foot is also on the floor. And from this position, you might wanna use your left hand to just open up that knee so you don't want your knee to be collapsing in towards you here you want to push it up so your knee is pointing towards the ceiling and as you do that you might feel a nice deep stretch through the outside of your right leg into your IT band and again here we just want a very very slight activation of the leg just to keep it opening up so it doesn't collapse in towards you but other than that we're relaxing everything else in the body and we have a slight twist happening through the torso here so your right hip is lifted off the floor really breathe into that twist breathe into your stretch taking another two minutes here
now to come on out of this twist, you may need to just activate the core a little bit so we can float the legs back up to center. Uncross and recenter your hips. And we're gonna go ahead and do that same little sequence on the other side. So bending into your left leg, flex the left foot and cross it over your right thigh. And then maybe grabbing a hold of your shin or the back of your thigh to guide this shape in closer towards you. Remembering that although there is a slight activation through the arms, we're not holding tension unconsciously through the shoulders or the neck or the collarbone. It's just a very, very small amount guiding your legs closer towards you. Breathing into your stretch. And just like we did on the first side, you're going to gently let your right foot come back onto the mat. Shift your hips slightly before we take this exact shape and twist it over towards the right here. So the sole of your left foot is flat on the mat or on the floor and you want to make sure that your knee is opening up. Arms can just hang by your sides here. Breathing into wherever you feel this the most. Feeling that rotation and that twist and spiral really coming from your navel. And we'll take another two minutes here.
again, just slightly powering up the core to bring your legs back to center. Uncross the legs, recenter your hips. And we're gonna make our way oops, into Shavasana as I kick my blocks out of the way. Just really allow yourself to take up space. Let your legs flop open. Let your palms open up towards the sky. Let your shoulders and upper body melt into the mat. We're going to take a couple of minutes here. And while we're here, I invite you to check in with any sensations that you might be feeling throughout the body, particularly in your lower back and in your glutes and your hips. Maybe you feel some buzzing from those stretches. Maybe you feel a little bit more length and space in these areas. Just make notes for yourself and see how you're feeling. Continuing to breathe in our Shavasana here. And this is where I'll leave you for today's class. I invite you to stay in Shavasana for another couple of minutes, remembering to come out of it slowly and mindfully. Thank you for joining me on the mat today. Please don't forget to like and subscribe before you go. And hopefully I will see you on the mat again very soon. Namaste.